One more thing before we start. The next step in this course will be implementing your DS and CC plan. But before we do that, I want you to keep an eye out for pseudo bravery. Let me explain. One of the first things that behavior consultants learn when working with fearful dogs is to not be fooled by what may look like bravery. Sometimes dogs will temporarily find the courage to get very close to the thing that scares them. Once there though, they can suddenly realize just how close they are and they can respond very fearfully. They can suddenly feel panicked and freeze or scramble to get away quickly. In some cases, especially if they feel trapped, they can respond aggressively. It's the reason that I won't allow a dog who's afraid of strangers to get too close to me too quickly. Propelled by curiosity, he might move closer to me just to check me out. And then he might just as suddenly realize that he's only inches away from the scariest thing on earth and then bite because he's, he feels threatened. And this is why we sometimes hear, he bit out of the blue, completely unprovoked. So to avoid this, I deliberately make sure that there's always a safe distance between us when we begin to establish a trusting relationship. During the DS process, your dog might surprise you and walk right up to the scary thing. Be careful not to misinterpret your dog's choice to walk right up to the scary thing as a sign of bravery or that he's over his fear. It could be that he's just accidentally gotten much closer than he intended and now he's stuck. This could lead to sensitization, the opposite of what you're trying to accomplish. Rather than gradually growing less afraid of the scary thing, he could become more afraid of it. Now let's look at an example. This sort of thing can happen easily, especially when the scary thing is a person or another animal who can move unpredictably. A dog who's afraid of strange men might see a man who's standing perfectly still and looking away from the dog. The dog might come close enough to sniff when suddenly the man turns and looks at him. Ah, I mean, that's a whole different situation. And now the dog is quickly terrified. It, it can happen with inanimate objects too. If you're working on your dog's fear of the vacuum, for example, and you, your, your carefully thought out plan indicates that today you're working on the vacuum being 15 feet away. Control your dog's direct access to the vacuum so that he doesn't suddenly walk up to it for a sniff. And you can accomplish that by either putting your dog on a leash, you know, maybe let the line drag on the, on the floor ready to be picked up or to, to step on in a hurry, or by placing a physical barrier like an exercise pen between your dog and the vacuum. Or if you're able to easily call your dog back with a verbal cue, just do that. However you choose to set up your DSCC sessions, just be aware that you might need to gently intervene to prevent him from getting too close to the scary thing, whether that thing is an object, a, a person, or a place. And I appreciate that logically, it would seem that getting closer is a good thing. Oh wow, look at him. He's walking right up to it and he's not even scared. But more likely, it'll turn out to be a case of too much, too soon. This kind of approach can backfire and set your plan back by several steps. And note that this type of accidental too much too soon exposure isn't the same as what's known as flooding or immersion. Flooding occurs when the dog is forced to face his fear with no way to escape until he gets over it. I don't recommend this technique under any circumstances.